Hello and welcome back to Game Domain. Today we're going to be bringing you guys part one of a brand new edition of our Good to Evil series. In this series, basically all we do is rank some characters, or in this case Pokemon, on a scale of good to evil within a given franchise. We've already covered Mario characters, so in this edition we're going to be covering Pokemon. The format for this two-part episode is as follows. We will be picking five Pokemon from each generation to rank on this good to evil scale. This first part is going to consist of 20 Pokemon, five from each of the first four generations. So with that said, let's get into Kanto. Kanto Pokemon. The five Pokemon we are going to be covering from Kanto are in no particular order, Gengar, Wigglytuff, Pikachu, Psyduck, and Weezing. Pikachu is the icon of the Pokemon franchise, and also the most heartfelt soul of these five Kantonian Pokemon. Pikachu is not only the lovable mascot of the franchise, Ash's iconic partner Pokemon in the anime, and the cover mascot for Pokemon Yellow, but Pikachu also evolves from Pichu through friendship. This means that if you have a Pikachu, it has reached max friendship with you, and is therefore in one of the most loving and pure forms that any Pokemon can be in. Pikachu's smile and trademark cry is iconic in not only the Pokemon franchise, not only to Nintendo fans, but is an icon for the entire gaming world. Wigglytuff is another smiling gem, and also a friendship evolution earlier in the evolution line. In order for Igglybuff to evolve into Jigglypuff, you need to have max friendship with it building a pure bond with the Pokemon since the very beginning. Once Jigglypuff evolves into Wigglytuff, using a Moonstone, it loses just a tad of that pureness and turns into a slightly more menacing Pokemon, one that is a fierce physical attacker with a wide move pool and a strong defense. Wigglytuff is not as pure as Pikachu due to the fierce battle prowess, but it is still on the good side among this group of Pokemon. Psyduck finds itself in the middle of good and evil. We're all very fond of Psyduck due to its prominence in the Pokemon anime as one of the Pokemon dwelling on Misty's team. Psyduck is notorious for being, well, a slow learner. Psyduck is almost always confused and suffers from a major headache just about 100% of the time. This means Psyduck lacks a lot of ability to make critical decisions on its own, which means it doesn't have much room to make good decisions or evil decisions. So it just kind of resides in the middle, neutral on the scale of good to evil. Weezing finds itself on the bad side of this scale. Weezing is synonymous with being a member of just about every other Team Rocket grunt in the Generation 1 and Generation 2 games, as well as the remakes. Weezing is an associate in the crimes and atrocities committed by Team Rocket across many seasons, and for that reason, it finds itself on the evil side of the scale. Weezing is a formidable battler and member of any player's team, but its close connection to Team Rocket make it more of an evil Pokemon than a good one. Gengar is the king of ghost-type Pokemon, the figurehead of the Generation 1 stable of ghost Pokemon, and just the face of all things creepy in the Pokemon universe. You need evidence of just how evil Gengar is? Well, look no further than some of Gengar's many freaky Pokedex entries. Pokemon Red and Blue's dex entry for Gengar reads, Under a full moon, this Pokemon likes to mimic the shadows of people and laugh at their fright. Its Pokemon Silver dex entry reads, To steal the life of its target, it slips into the prey's shadow and silently waits for an opportunity. And finally, arguably the creepiest, Gengar's Fire Red dex entry states, It is said to emerge from darkness to steal the lives of those who become lost in mountains. So yeah, there's your proof. Gengar feasts off of the fright and nightmares of humans, and will pounce at every chance it gets to scare the crap out of you or actually take your life. Gengar is certainly an evil Pokemon, and you just better hope you have one on your team and not have to encounter one of these creepy monsters in the wild. To wrap up the Kanto section of this video, here are the five Kanto Pokemon we chose in order from good to evil. Pikachu, Wigglytuff, Psyduck, Weezing, and Gengar. Now on to Johto. Johto Pokemon. The five Pokemon we're going to be covering from Johto are in no particular order, Bayleaf, Togepi, Unknown, Granbull, and Misdreavus. Togepi is the personification of the pure Generation 2 Pokemon. Like Pikachu, Togepi is iconic in many different facets of the Pokemon community. Togepi is the first ever baby Pokemon, and is the first ever Pokemon you hatch from an egg, as it is a gift to you from Mr. Pokemon and Professor Elm in the Generation 2 games, which introduced eggs and the breeding feature. Togepi is the iconic baby mon, and for that reason is as pure as pure can be. It is also one of the most adorable Pokemon around, and all of us diehard fans have such fond memories of its cuteness due to its prominence in the Pokemon anime as Misty's sidekick Pokemon that she carried around with her everywhere. And yes, for those of you confused, Togepi is in fact a Generation 2 Pokemon. Even though Togepi appears in the Generation 1 anime, 
it was not officially released until the Generation 2 games Gold and Silver. Bayleaf is one of the cutest members of any starter Pokemon line, but it is also a fierce battler with strong stats to boot. Don't let Bayleaf's cute cry and adorable face fool you, as this middle evolution starter can certainly pack a serious blow to your team, or your opponent's team if you have Bayleaf on yours. Bayleaf is on the good side of the spectrum, but is certainly not the most pure and good out of the 5 generation 2 Pokemon we selected to look at. Unknown is one of the most odd and mysterious non-legendary Pokemon in all of Pokemon. Their inclusion in the Generation 2 Pokedex still baffles many, as they're not good battlers, but yet are so bland and impactful on the lore of the series. The Unknown dwell in the Runes of Life in the Johto region, and are at the center of a few in-game special Nintendo events revolving around their presence, as well as their prominent inclusion in the third Pokemon movie. We put the Unknown on the middle of this list because although at first glance they seem bad, Throughout the entire third Pokemon movie, they were creating these illusions for Molly in order for her to be happy, while also terrorizing Ash and causing havoc in the movie. The Unknown were just trying to help Molly overcome the difficult loss of a parent, and recreated her father in their form of Entai. This also caused, in our opinion, the most epic battle in the entire Pokemon anime, Charizard vs Entai at the end of the movie. Unknown are not pure and not evil, and find themselves in the middle of this scale for Johto. Granbull, at first glance, wouldn't seem like it would be that evil, but its face gives the appearance and feel of that evil bulldog or pit bull that resides in that eerie house next door. The one that you're afraid to get the ball out of the yard after you hit it over like in the sandlot. Granbull doesn't really have any bad Pokedex entries, it just looks like it would attack people it doesn't like, similar to that mean dog we described earlier. Mistrevis is yet another super evil ghost type Pokemon and some of the stories revolve around this Ghostmon, and arguably creepier and worse than what we saw earlier with Gengar. Let's hear some of these entries. For Pokemon Gold, it likes playing mischievous tricks such as screaming and wailing to startle people at night. For Pokemon Silver, it loves to bite and yank people's hair from behind without warning, just to see their shocked reactions. For Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, Mistrevis frightens people with a creepy sobbing cry. The Pokemon apparently uses its red spheres to absorb the fearful feelings of foes and turn them into nutrition. These dex entries just show how evil Mistrevis is, as it feeds off of the fear of humans. When a human is full of fear, Mistrevis takes that fear and fuels its energy, using it as nutrition. If that doesn't scream evil, then I don't know what to tell you. To wrap up the Johto section of this video, here are the 5 Johto Pokemon we chose in order from good to evil. Togepi, Bayleaf, Unknown, Granbull, and Mistrevis. Now on to Hoenn. Hoenn Pokemon. The five Pokemon we are going to be covering from Hoenn are in no particular order, Mudkip, Sharpedo, Gardevoir, Salamence, and Jirachi. Jirachi is easily the most pure and good Pokemon out of these five. Jirachi is one of the most innocent and harmless mythical Pokemon out there, and she is a shining beam of good in what is sometimes a very negative atmosphere in the world of Hoenn. Hoenn throughout the games is in constant threat of a massive change in climate that can result in severe death and destruction of land, people, and Pokemon alike. Team Magma wants to turn the whole world into land using the powers of Groudon, and Team Aqua wants to turn the whole world into water using the powers of Kyogre. Both of these evil teams pose a large threat to Hoenn and create a negative atmosphere surrounding the region towards the end of the games when their plans are almost fulfilled. Jirachi, however, provides a sense of light, hope, and cuteness to what can sometimes be a dark world. Mudkip is a fierce little baby starter mon, and for that reason, it is not as pure and good as Jirachi is. Mudkip is a ferocious battler, when need be, and can also pack a punch to your heart with its cute tendencies. Mudkip is known well for its viral memes over the years, and due to its large internet spotlight. It does not have the greatest record to back it up. You know, just normal famous celebrity stuff. Psychic Mons are normally meant to be pure, but due to their fierce battle prowess and thought expertise, they aren't as much on the good side as we really think. Gardevoir is the staple Generation 3 Psychic type Mon, and we have placed it right here in the middle of this good to evil scale. Gardevoir is the signature Pokemon of your true rival in the Generation 3 games, Wally. Gardevoir has a very bland and not very astute personality, similar to Wally. They are both very introverted, making them a perfect match and pair for each other, which is exactly why Game Freak chose Ralts as Wally's first Pokemon, to build up the character development of Wally. Gardevoir is a menace on the battlefield, but is also guided by its pure and calm mind making it right in the middle of our good to evil scale for these 5 generation 3 Pokemon. Salamence is another Pokemon that's a bit hard to read. Being the trademark dragon Pokemon of generation 3, Salamence gives off the persona of being a mean and evil battler that is ready and willing to take another Pokemon
Pokemon down on command. And to be frank, this does seem to be the attitude of Salamence. Salamence's dex entry for Pokemon Emerald reads, After many long years, its cellular structure underwent a sudden mutation to grow wings. When angered, it loses all thought and rampages out of control. While Salamence doesn't seem to be intentionally mean or evil, when angered, its quick fuse temper will burst into an uncontrollable outrage, similar to the signature Dragon-type Pokemon move, Outrage. The most evil Pokemon out of the five we chose for Generation 3 is the signature Pokemon of Team Aqua. Team Aqua is, of course, a team stemming from domination of the world by water, through the powers of the legendary water type, Kyogre. Most powerful Team Aqua members have a Sharpedo on their team, as the Dark and Water type packs a powerful punch in its effort to destroy your team and stop you from getting in their way. Although the Pokemon isn't inherently evil, Team Aqua utilizes Sharpedo to be the figurehead of their dirty work, which makes the Pokemon slide all the way to the evil side of our scale. To wrap up the Hoenn section of this video, here are the 5 Hoenn Pokemon we chose in order from good to evil. Jirachi, Mudkip, Gardevoir, Salamence, and Sharpedo. Now, on to Sinnoh. Sinnoh Pokemon. The five Pokemon we are going to be covering from Sinnoh, in no particular order, are Pachirisu, Ambipom, Driftblim, Porygon Z, and Darkrai. Pachirisu is Generation 4's Pikachu clone, as we call them in the Pokemon community, as every new generation Game Freak makes a new Pokemon that is a very obvious attempt at trying to be similar to Pikachu. Of course, this never works, as every generation's Pikachu clone is always completely forgotten about and seen as one of the more useless Pokemon in that given region's Pokedex. Pachirisu, however, seems to be perfectly matched to the cuteness and pureness of Pikachu, as we see Pachirisu as being the personification of good and pureness out of the five Pokemon we chose to put on this scale from the Sinnoh region. Pachirisu always dons that cute little smile, and its tiny size makes it a great walking companion for any trainer ready to have a great friend and good Pokemon at their side along for their journey. Ambipom is a fun and playful Pokemon, but can also be a menace on the battlefield. As we've seen with the last few generations, the Pokemon that we're scaling in between good and neutral are always good-hearted Pokemon who are fierce competitors. Ambipom fits this description perfectly, as it is a fun and playful companion as well as a great battler who would be a worthy addition to anybody's team. Coming in at the neutral spot is Porygon Z. Now, Porygon is arguably the most plain and bland Pokemon, with no real heart or no real evil motives at all. And of course, Porygon Z is the final evolution form of Porygon, so it fits that build as well. There is nothing good about Porygon, and nothing bad about Porygon, as it really doesn't have any sort of personality whatsoever. Driftblim is another Pokemon that falls onto the evil side due to its mysterious Pokedex entries, and of course, its ghost typing. All ghost Pokemon have a commonality of very creepy and eerie Pokedex entries that make you shiver while reading them after you have just registered them to your Pokedex. Driftblim's Pokedex entries are as follows. In Pokemon Pearl, it carries people and Pokemon when it flies, but since it only drifts, it can end up anywhere. In Black 2 and White 2, they carry people and Pokemon, but the wind can catch them, so there can't be a fixed destination. In Pokemon Sun, there was once an incident in which a man took a trip riding a Drift Blim, only to go missing. In Pokemon Ultra Sun, there's a rumor that if you catch a Drift Blim floating on the wind at dusk, you'll be carried away to the afterlife. I mean, do we have to do any more explanation as to why we have this Pokemon on the evil side? The even scarier part is that there's still one Pokemon that's more evil from this group of Sinnoh Pokemon. Darkrai is the epitome of evil, and honestly, the inspiration for making this good to evil Pokemon edition in the first place. Out of all the Pokemon we have covered today, and out of all the Pokemon from generations 1 through 4 in general, Darkrai is by far the most evil and twisted Pokemon of them all. Darkrai has always had a creepy and eerie persona and history surrounding it. Its appearance in the Rise of Darkrai Pokemon movie showed that he does have a heart, and is just trying to do good but the horrors it causes people on an everyday basis are something to behold. Like we've done with a few of these Pokemon today, we're just going to read off some of Darkrai's Pokedex entries and you'll see what we mean. In Pokemon Pearl, folklore has it that on moonless nights, this Pokemon will make people see horrific nightmares. In Pokemon Platinum, to protect itself, it afflicts those around it with nightmares. However, it means no harm. In Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, it chases people and Pokemon from its territory by causing them to experience deep and nightmarish slumbers. In Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, it can lull people to sleep and make them dream. It is active during nights of the new moon. 
Although we hear time and time again that Darkrai means no harm from all of this, it is still easily the most evil Pokemon from Generation 4, and certainly the first four generations that we covered in this video. To wrap up the final section of this video, here are the five Sinnoh Pokemon we chose in order from good to evil. Pachirisu, Ambipom, Porygon Z, Drifblim, and Darkrai. That does it for part one of this video. Down in the comments section below. Don't forget to click subscribe and leave a like on today's video, as well as check out some of our other recent uploads. Make sure you also check out the links in the description, as there you'll find the link to our Patreon and to join our Discord. Join our Discord to connect with our staff here at the channel, as well as participate in the great Domain Legion content we have going on there. Our Discord is open to all gaming fans, as we now have over 660 fans of the channel and gamers talking about what we love to do every single day. So come on and join to participate in this great community. We would once again like to thank you guys for all of your incredible support, and thanks for watching today's video. We'll see you for part two soon.